Welcome to Trial by Wine. We take a closer look at crimes that highlight how fascinating humans can be. Schmitty, Swanee and Clarky visit crimes and run them through their jury of three, debating both sides of the case to agree an appropriate, if totally fictitious, sentence. Please be advised, Trial by Wine may include explicit or disturbing content and will include drunken rambling. Listener discretion is advised. All right, how are we? Yes, I'm I'm feeling okay. I've got a nice little uh, soup um, to keep me going. Grandma, who did listen to the last episode, I've got a bit of a yeah, croaky thing going on. Yes, well, you were, were coming down with that actually on the weekend, remember? The two of you complained about I was, being sick Yeah, beforehand. we both were. Yeah. But you pulled through, you yeah. pushed through and you oompa loompa out. It was all very good. But yes, I wasn't that surprised was when you said you were sick. Right. Well, it's got to go one way or the other when you drink, I find. Sometimes it does kill it and sometimes yes. it makes it You never quite yeah. know which way it'll go. Sometimes mm. you feel so terrible and you drink it and it really does seem to kill it. You think, oh, my God, that was like miraculous. I should do that all the time. But it doesn't always <laughs> happen that way, does it? No. no it's not a no, magic But it's always worth or... trying just in case. <laughs> Indeed it is. True. All right. Well, I suppose we should introduce ourselves. I'm Schmitty. I'm Swanee. And I'm Clarky. And together we are... Trial, Trial by wine. wine. And what are we drinking? Not oh, wine. Not no. wine. No. <laughs> I want a Coke Zero. Return I've got my uh, veggie soup and uh, oh, nice. the yeah elderberry. Yeah, elderberry uh, spritz tonic in my soda stream. Delicious. Lovely. Well, I'm the one holding up the alcoholic side, so I'm still drinking Brookvale Union ginger beers. And they're nice. delicious. Lovely. How many have you had? Mm. Three. Three. I yeah, went to a 50th, awesome. not this weekend, but last weekend, and the drinks on offer were champagne or dark and stormy on arrival. And mm-hmm. I thought, oh, I'll just have a champagne. And the husband sort of pushed me toward, he was, this guy, was, my friend's husband was serving drinks. And it was so delicious, like the ginger beer and the rum and whatever else. I stuck with them all night. I actually wasn't too bad the next day. So I think sometimes just sticking with what you're on, but it was very enjoyable. I really do quite like ginger beer. I think you got me onto that, Shmitty. No, I didn't. You you drank it oh, somewhere. I told you, and you I don't know. That's that's right. It was. It was the opposite. Then, yeah. We went on the um, True North. Yes. On the True North. Yeah, that's yeah. That's right. That. It was the other way around. Yeah. But I can't remember. I was going to say Ginger Ninjas, but was that that's what it was? That's what it was. Or? It was. Oh, yeah, it right. was ginger beer, <laughs> but I can't remember what else it had in it. But I do think that I, it's strange because mm-hmm. I don't particularly like, Jeremy and I were having some soup the other day and it had too much ginger and it was like overpowering. But yet I really like ginger beer. It's become a bit of a, I don't drink it often, but when I do, I think, oh, gosh, I forgot that I like this. So good on you for having some. Who's got a story for us? I do. Oh, excellent. Haven't heard from you in a little while. Swanee. I know. And it's a bit of a departure, certainly for the last story. Mm-hmm. Nothing gory. It's excellent. more of a rollicking tale than anything, I oh, think. Oh, I love and it. And well, uh... I found it quite difficult to get facts? dates and facts. Oh, so <laughs> it's a little bit loose, One of but, those. but it's quite entertaining. So hopefully it'll be right. good enough, close enough is good enough, and, you know, no one's going to be, like, it wasn't, it wasn't. I don't think anyone would care that much, but, yes, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. Now, how it came about was we're currently recording during the Paris Olympics, mm-hmm. and this story is... Well, it's a French story uh, and it does have some um, Parisian content, I guess, um, which I'll have us looking at Google Maps at one point, of course, because I do like to incorporate a little bit of map work into each of my stories. But it it does mean that some of the sources I struggled with a little bit because some of the stuff, a lot of it wasn't actually, uh, well, you know, the usual stuff was in English, which was, you know, the usual three paragraphs that are shared on every website. But some of the French stuff was either conflicting or unclear or I had to watch an entire documentary which a lot of it was so French like it was not like you know an American documentary they're like trying to give you know set a scene or whatever else it's more of them like thinking about things and telling you how they feel and you know walking through fields and having a a big old chat and time was of the essence I really didn't have time to do too much of that but it it gave me more of a a sense of uh, the uh, people who are involved and their experiences so I hope to share some of that with you so in terms Mm -hmm. of my sources I did use one YouTube source which was called see Elise and the episode was entitled the king of escape I also used French Wikipedia because this was not on English Wikipedia and I had to have it translated and it's not a 
not a not a fabulous translation, but uh-huh. I will I will try and use a little bit of it just for some of the the details. Nineties anxiety was where I first saw this story, which is actually a, an Instagram page that I follow, and it had just loaded this story up, and I thought, oh my god, I must save that, which I did, because um, I just I thought the imagery, which was obviously it will come into the story later on, was just it got me, so I thought oh, I'll use that there was another uh blog i guess i found called the the lesser stories <laughs> which i guess this would be one of uh, i also used usually like referenced exo edition which is a, a publication a, a book that was that pertains to the crime and that's about it so they're my sources so again a, a bit of a weird one there's no daily mail although i could probably could have found something on daily mail if i had a, had have looked um, and I have seen a couple of things on CNN, et cetera. But, again, it's the same three paragraphs repeated with the same images. So there wasn't really much that you were sort of gathering from any of that. So today's story, unbeknownst to me, is about a somewhat common situation or crime, I guess, that occurs in France. Apparently the French quite like to do prison escapes via helicopter. Now I know this is not the first. Oh, I'm silly. Story. This is not yeah. the first time we've covered it. Because when I start looking, I think, why is this ringing a bell? I have to tell you, if you look at us, we'll just find what it's wow. called. If you were to Google "prison escapes by helicopter," which is actually, you can you search that on Wikipedia. There's a, a long, long list by country, by prison, you know, where the people have been escaping from, and apparently. The French kind of like it, and they it's quite common. So when I first started researching this story, the guy's name who I had, I'm like, who's this guy? That's somebody else. There's so many of them that they have a series of people who are the helicopter escapee. Wow. Who have, have been famous at different points in yeah. you know, somewhat recent history, sort of the back of obviously it's a helicopter, but certainly the late 20th century and not so much recently, but, you know, earlier in the 2000s so who knew they have a bit of a Brilliant. thing for it. i don't i don't think we have a thing for helicopter not that i'm, aware, escape, of, that I'm no. aware of no there was one that i could find there's a couple of those, but pentridge they were oh, like yeah. three suspects all held on drug really? importation charge hired, hired a former sas soldier then living in the philippines <laughs> to leave the prison so it's not that it hasn't happened here but wow. you know it's funny how you know different countries end up with different things you know they're famous for whatever else but there you go the french Quite partial to a, a friend. A, a helicopter, helicopter prison break. Yeah. The story starts with our our star, shall we say, a gentleman by the name. And let's see how many times I changed his name throughout this because I've got such a terrible habit. I put it on the wall in front of me and I still reckon I'll get it wrong. His name is Michel Vajour. <laughs> and he was born in 1951, January 16, in Saint Quentin Le Petit. And he is. A former French robber known for having received 12 convictions, totaling 27 years in prison, including 17 in high security. This guy is pretty good at spending time in prison and getting sent to prison. As it turns out, he's also quite good at making attempts to flee. And that's why he becomes kind of famous and then later on I'll, I'll sort of talk about some other people and their experiences because they as I said it's a French thing they want their liberté they want to be free they want to go out and they don't want to be confined in the restrictions of a prison so Michel Vajour was the son of a civil servant and sadly he was abandoned at the age of four by his parents and at that point he was sent to live with his aunt And he had a really fabulous relationship with her and she adored having him and pretty much taught him everything that he knew at a very young age because it came from a loving relationship. However, she died when he was just eight years old and at that point he was returned to live with his parents and his father was a violent alcoholic. So it was not a particularly great time. And to be honest, he sort of goes on and lives, you know, a a pretty normal life as as a teenager And it's not until later in his life that when he reflects on that that he sort of thinks that actually it made him quite angry and and wanting to sort of, you know, not he didn't want to be part of a community. He didn't, you know, things like the normal rules didn't really apply to him, which as an older man he can look at and see that that's as a result of his upbringing. He was a factory worker and a father by 18, so it all happened pretty quickly. And where things start to go downhill quite rapidly is actually just a situation where one night he's out and he's drunk 
and he borrows a car. He's so drunk, he drives the car home and goes to bed drunk and is woken up the next morning by his partner, I don't know if they were married, and the mother of his child, and the police are there saying, you know, you've, you've this car stolen because it's been reported stolen. I was wondering if borrowed meant stolen or yes. if... So out the out the window he jumps and he runs away anyway he gets he gets <laughs> they catch him, but it's not um, like done in the sense that he was I mean he's parked in the front yard like in the front driveway it's not like he's trying to hide it he's gone to bed drunk, but he ends up having to do thirty months in prison for that thirty months in prison for that yeah that's what it says in Wikipedia Fred that's all I can go on so it does seem like an awful lot but it does wow. say that he was released from prison in December nineteen seventy two which I think was slightly earlier. But he was banned from entering 21 departments. So the department's kind of like a little state, sort of what's well, exactly like a state within within France. So I don't know how they chose the 21. There's no information on that, but I've seen it quoted a number of times because I suspect it's just one of those things that everybody then says. But there were some rules around his release, but I think he just, got just, a bit of just before them, I, that yeah. thing about 30 months for taking a car home, yeah. So I've had discussions with Reggie about yeah. stealing. And so mm-hmm. in Victoria, it has to have an intent to deprive someone of something to, to be convicted of stealing. So wow. it's not. So what he's done is, like you said, more or less borrowed someone's power. Sure, he's taken it without Being a consent. a total moron, yeah. But it's not like he's going to pluck at his driveway and change the number plates and spray it and make money off it. <laughs> no, it literally was probably parked badly in your front yard going, whoops. Yeah, yeah he's probably shocked that there's even a car at the front because he can't remember how he got home. I wonder if it would have been different had he actually just walked out the front and gone, oh, God, I can't believe that because he ran off. Yeah. It would have, wouldn't have made it better, Two that's for sure. years, though. Wow. He was then hired as an aerial worker in an oil complex. I thought you were going to say little skill. Where he was arrested one day for driving without a licence. Fleeing. <laughs> <laughs> he keeps running away. He was yeah, arrested that's in Mackle. Imprisoned. He escaped the first time. But he was arrested again after attempted burglary. And so what happens is it starts to be this sort of theme where he he absolutely is a burglar. In that sort of, we don't often talk about it anymore. I think it was such a crime of a different time when, you know, there's so much internet crime now or, you know, other types of violent crime. This idea that people used to really get a lot of stuff stolen, you know, I mean, people were always talking mm. about cars and goods and that's how people were able to steal things and then go and make money that way. Do you remember before the internet, right? It was, yeah. you know, it was a crime of the time. It was just crime you know, centuries, but that's your, where you went to. I think now maybe you'd possibly try other avenues to, you know, defraud people of money or whatever it is. In the old days, it was just, when I'm saying the old days, the 80s, it was like, you know, rock up to someone's house or business and take what you can and try and With VCR. Correct. Not petty, but not, you know, he wasn't going out to harm anybody or anything like that, but he was definitely, he became, a, you know, a seasoned Robber, burglar, whatever you want to say. In prison, he escaped the first time. He was arrested again after an attempted burglary. And at this point, he was sentenced to four years in prison. Again, he escaped after several oh. unsuccessful attempts. <laughs> he then came up with an idea. Oh, this is one of my favourite things. So this is, again, one of those things that is so French. Do you know, of course you know, you know what a baby girl cheese is? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. With a little red wax seal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, you Use know, them to make spashes of baby cheeses. That's exactly what you make them for in Kath and Kim. You're so <laughs> right. Well, what he did, they were obviously giving them as a goûter, which is a little snack, in the prison. So he was clever enough to collect the red wax and he made it into like a ball and he purposely had like a, a rumble with one of the guards, at which point, and this actually worked, it sounds like a it up, he was able to forcefully pr- press the red wax and the mini baby bells into the into key. key to get oh. like an impression. <laughs> <laughs> then he had to go to sort of chicken farm. Like, he got into a lot of trouble and he got extra time. But as a result of that, he still wasn't in like a prison that was particularly high security. So they still had workshop and they did lots of things. So from that imprint, he was apparently went back to the other guys who was like, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going, but I've got it, we're good. Because he told what the other people what he was going to do. Like he was a little bit of a hero in amongst the other inmates because he had this we're going to get out. I'm getting out. I'm not staying here kind of thing. No, it's not for me. Give me some time. I'm going to, I've got away. So with that, he was able to then take the imprint, obviously after he'd served a bit of extra time in 
I don't know if it was solitary confinement, but some kind of additional punishment at that prison. And he made a duplicate key of his cell. God. <laughs> Can you believe it? There, there I've got it. Having jostled a guard, he takes the imprint of the key from the bunch with the red wax from the crust of the baby bell and reproduces it with a piece of iron worked with a file and a hacksaw. Just as well they weren't having laughing cow cheese instead of baby bells. That's exactly so really right. Nowhere. I like that. That would be no use. We have to just have no. a foil. Or the little round box. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's impressive coming up with the idea of the execution. I'm like, that's great. Well done. Some of the, some I suppose of you've got a lot of time in jail to think about how you're going yeah, to get out. Yeah. But to not get caught as a lot of the guard didn't know, that noticed the baby bell <laughs> wax being pushed against his key. I know. And to get the key. right key. Maybe I, they're all don't you wreck, It just seems. It's like something in mean, the film. Yeah, yeah. It seems like. Unlikely. It would have to be such a perfect, in, you know, it would have to be someone of a perfect impression, wouldn't it, yeah, to work, work it in, a, in a prison system like a key and not just to get the right angle. Anyway, apparently it mm. worked. The next bit I'm not quite, I don't quite understand. Again, as I said, it's sort of translated. He says, the lock being on the outside, I presume of, the, of his room, remember, like his cell, so he's oh, got yeah. the key to access. He reached it after drilling with an immersion heater. I don't really know what that means. Oh, an immersion heater is like a thing that you stick into like a, um, like a little maybe a oh. fish tank or oh okay there you go oh so, so he somehow got bar. through that melted, okay. melted or something with the immersion heater element yeah maybe. oh dear god yeah. i don't know anyway he's he's quite ingenious in 1979 he escaped again by taking an investigating judge hostage i don't know where that was i presume it'd be in a courtroom and not in the Sounds like I it. don't quite know. Maybe that's just a translation no, again. Of um, we no, know. no, no, because they like your prosecution and that. Yeah, are, no, it's just in front. It. Yeah, no, no, okay. it's a different system. Right. Yeah, a different okay. system where the judge does the investigation the does with the investigation. everyone and makes yeah, a decision. So I didn't know that. Portland. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, they've got a okay. quite different Well, system. anyway, well, that may, well, okay. So in 1979, he escaped again by taking an investigating judge hostage, whom he held up with a soap gun blackened with shoe polish. <laughs> well, it made this out of guy a... would be yeah. a master with Play-Doh. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Imagine it... what he could create Whitler. in a... Oh. He's a good little oh. Whitler. A little, little Whitler. I like it. I, this, I think, maybe he was actually on the lam for quite a while. At this point, he entered into organised crime and there's different references I've seen where he became associated with organised crime, both in the clink and outside. So at this point, I think he's got a couple of contacts, so to speak. And he seems to be incredibly popular with people. Like, not, I'm not talking about the general public at this point. I don't think they're particularly aware of him. But, you know, he doesn't seem to have people after him. He seems to embolden other people with these ideas that, you know, come on, let's go rob this bank or let's go break out or we can do that. You know, come and join me. Like, he's, he's a bit of a leader in that respect. People kind of get on board. Mm. Anyway, so... He entered organised crime but was recaptured at the end of 1984. Now, this is where the story gets a little bit more interesting and this is where we introduce another character and her name is Nadine Vajor and she's actually his wife. So not the first woman that he was with that he had the baby with at the very beginning. Once he left there, I don't think he went back. But he does meet this woman, Nadine Vajor, through his organised crime connections. And I actually think it's the sister of someone that he'd met in prison. So she's no stranger to, you know, a kind of naughty savory, guys. like, yeah, naughty guys and, you know, the, yeah. the, the saucier side of life. She's she's seen a thing or two. Hmm. But she falls head over heels in love with Michelle and vice versa, with Nadine. So let me tell you a little bit about what Nadine did because her husband has been sent back to jail again and she's thinking, well, I don't know that I really want him in there. There must be a way that I can help. And <laughs> so Nadine, for her part, uh, decides that she's going to be a fabulous accomplice and a fabulous wife. So what does she do? She starts a campaign outside the prison, well, outside in, in, um, in Paris, to learn how to fly a helicopter. So she gets a message to him in prison that says, I'm going to come and get you and I'm going to do it on this day. And it's so far in advance, unbelievable. Like she's 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 not in a hurry. She's not doing it. It's a bit like Sharon. She knows that she's got to take her time to do this. And if she's seen to be hurried or uncool or whatever else, she's got to really be able to be laid back about this in terms of having the lesson and having access to helicopter, etc. So what she does is she gets a message to Michelle that says, you know, on such and such a day, I'm going to come, 
and I'm going to get you out of the prison. Which apparently for French people seems pretty common. So it's not like he's going to be going, don't, don't be ridiculous. He's like, but of course you are. So at that point, she starts taking flying lessons and it doesn't take her very long to get her license. I think that happens in a matter of months. But then after that, what she does is bi-monthly, she hires a helicopter, which is expensive. It was like 315, I don't know if it was dollars or euros. Away. It wouldn't have been euros in a day. It would have been francs, but I, I, maybe it translated to $315 an hour for two hours each time. So I said it was, it was expensive for her to do that and always paid in cash. I don't know if she used a name, but no one was suspicious. And so that was what she did. She was getting ready for this mission. Now inside, Michelle had befriended a guy called Pierre Hernandez and Pierre and Michelle were, were busy themselves. Arts and crafts, these guys, you know what they're like. They've got to be making something in there, right? So what are they making? So at approximately 10.30 a.m. on May 26, 1986, a helicopter flew low over central Paris. Yeah, Map time, this. people. Let's get our maps out. Love this. I looked at this because I wanted to know just how central it was relative to what we would know in central Paris or what, you know, Joe Blow would know. So mm. the name of the prison, La Sante, and L-A or Paris La Sante, L-A-S-A-N-T-E. Okay, yep. Right? I so go, yep. There. So, and then may do directions to, and I put in the Eiffel Tower. And you'll see it's not far from the Chavin de Luxembourg. It's actually pretty darn central. Montparnasse. Is there, is oh, there, yeah, Montparnasse, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So yep. if you're in a helicopter, you're pretty central. You know, you won't really, you, she wasn't out in the sticks by any stretch of the imagination. She'd be wow. definitely flying over those lovely Parisian rooftops that are so, you know, we're so <laughs> familiar with. So this unsurprisingly, is, I mean, air traffic control went nuts. Can you imagine? I was going to say, how did they just shoot her down? Like, I can't believe yeah. they did. Oh, no, she just... <laughs> It makes me laugh because the image of it, which I would like you look at the end, it's what my kids used to watch this cartoon. And the, in the cartoon, there was a yellow helicopter called Whirly Bird. And it looks like that. It's just a very fine little white helicopter. Like there's not, no big structure to it. It's like, you know, the, the very front was all glass, not much metal work. Do you know what I mean? Like just a, probably the smallest helicopters there are really in some respects. Anyway, imagine that flying over central Paris. Everyone going, hey, stop. You know, all right, all right, please, stop, respond <laughs> or something, nothing. So Nadine Vajor ignored a hail of radio warnings and brought the machine to a hovering well, stop. She's ignoring them. She's breaking <laughs> every <laughs> law. She doesn't know, right? shit. Over the roof of one of the prison buildings. The warnings over the guards' radios of a helicopter on the roof were eclipsed by a far more intense situation developing inside the walls. And eventually, Vajor and Hernandez emerged from an access door and jogged unchallenged across the roof. Why were they unchallenged? What's going on? A slope gun. <laughs> Why yeah. weren't the prison guards shooting? There was not a shot match. Sh I shot know. Match. What they did was minutes before the two men appeared on the roof, you know, and French prison guards aren't known to hold their fire, apparently. It sounds like the Victorian ones. <laughs> they certainly yeah. not hold, they aren't known to hold their fire during an attempted escape, especially one that involves a helicopter hanging out over their heads. The Vajours were well aware of this. They had tried to work out a way that they so they studied other 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 helicopter sort of escapades. Yeah, as I said before, helicopter escapes are bizarrely common in France in the latter part of the 20th century. <laughs> they knew that guards would need a really compelling reason not to open fire, and the escapees made sure they had one. So escapees only made sure they had one. Mm. While the helicopter flew over the prison, the guards were far more focused on another report coming over the radio. Two inmates, Vajor and Hernandez had apparently managed to smuggle in a number of grenades and now wow. are threatening to detonate them if they were approached. So the grenades, they've got them, and the whole time they're threatening, you know, our Vajur and Hernandez are our guys on the roof, they're threatening, if you come, you come here, we're going to detonate our grenades. The grenades were, it was later revealed, nectarines. <laughs> From the prison cafeteria. <laughs> I'll detonate my nectarine if you can. Which you painted green. Majur and Canet has made a point to pause frequently as they made their way to the roof, menacingly waving their fistfuls of fruit at the pursuing <laughs> officers. <laughs> Just ridiculous, isn't it? With the threat of explosives, the two men, the presumed threat of more explosive on board the waiting helicopter, not a single shot was fired. It's at this point that Michelle is able to scramble up and he grabs the runner of the helicopter and eventually managing to sue himself in 
Hernandez, and I've read I've read and, and heard two different versions. Is one of them says for reasons unknown he changed his mind. The other one was that Nadine wasn't uh, entirely sure of who it was. So she was like, Who's that? I don't I don't know who that is. I'm only really worried about my husband. Out of here. Yeah. You're out of here. So it's one or the other who will know. In this version, it says that he he quietly sort of just surrendered. Slunk to away. Ladies. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, don't worry about me. I oh, actually I'll second thoughts. Never mind. I don't even know how I got on the roof. What? I know, right? Oh, <laughs> oh so why am I holding this nectarine? Oh, it's gone. It's just like oh, yeah. green nectarines. Green. Oh, well, you know, they were very... Don't mind me. And then the helicopter disappeared from view and the Vashors were away. Unbelievable. It is. I, it doesn't even seem, you know, it's, it's, it's like Paul. we so often, yeah, so many no. times we look at these crimes and it, it takes one little bit where someone had a bit of luck or, or really no luck yeah. or whatever. Else. This is just ridiculousness every single every single turn you go oh mm. come on come on come on so now again you're quite right Clarkie still over the Paris rooftops off they go no one's got uh, how does that work it, has someone not at this point mm. gone that's gone into a prison the one we've been asking to stop maybe we'll follow it out of it anyway yeah yeah let's no, do something just more got than that, just the watch. French reaction funny mm. funny visual French reaction <laughs> You know, the downturn mouth. Je ne pas français. The remainder of the escape was picture perfect. Nadine flew the helicopter to a nearby athletic field and the pair disappeared into a waiting car. Wonderful. They remained at large for more than four months. That's on the lamb, isn't it? I need to check that every time. Yeah. Even managing to pick up their two daughters because at one yes. point when he was out of prison he, he'd, he'd had one child with the dean he had a second affair, yeah? he went and they went and got the kids what hang on i've just got to get and out I of think, jail so i can pick up the i kids. think the kids were at the grandparents <laughs> it just feels oh, like God. that's what that's what please if, <laughs> if this story and i've been totally led astray i apologize because i just can't even believe what i'm saying because apparently they had been under surveillance but somehow they got the kids out so they picked up the kids from the nose of police surveillance the breakout did make headlines around the world as French police presumably were forced to award Vajour some sort of gold star for actually completing his fifth prison break oh my of God. his career. <laughs> wow. What happens next again is pure Vajour. Um, <laughs> the couple went back into Paris. They didn't leave Paris oh. where, you know, they'd just escaped from prison and she'd be living with us. Oh, no, no. They made their way to a prepared hideout and... It was three months later, I think, which must have taken a while for them to go back to the house. It was over four months. They were apprehended by police in the early morning. I'd read somewhere and it was actually done as a joke, which said that they were, uh, they'd opened a coffee shop. And then so I was like, just kidding. Of course they weren't. They were committing a robbery and they had committed a robbery the day before. <laughs> a court roll robbery a bank, second time in, it was actually, sorry, three days, which is, again, just, they're just so emboldened. They're just, you know, nothing mm. seems. Like, oh, we won't give that a break or we won't air some else. No, no, no. Business as usual. No. no. Business as usual. Now, in a shootout with police, Michelle took a bullet to the head. Oh, to the ear or to the head? No, to the head. Oh, my God. Which he somehow survived, obviously, because I talk about him. What? <laughs> He'd been in five prisons and a little bullet to the head wasn't going to take him down either. He was in a coma for several weeks. And at that point, they were able, before he left the I think obviously at the very beginning, they didn't actually know that the people who had initially got him in the, in the bank robbery didn't know that it was Michel Vajour. It was only when he's been shot, he's got into the coma and they've taken his fingerprints in the hospital, they've actually realised who they've got. Who they is. didn't actually know oh, that to start no. with. God. I had, again, seen somewhere else, but I couldn't verify, I can't verify any of this, let's be honest, that they'd had <laughs> plastic surgery. All right, yeah, uh. yeah. Oh, no, no, and I've seen pictures of it. I can't, it doesn't seem obvious to me. Like, Maybe I just like baby bill wrappers <laughs> that were skin tones or <laughs> mould that's even eaten those or yeah, yeah, yeah. Just prosthetics. chin. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So after coming out of a week's long coma, he was tried and convicted and returned to a maximum security prison. <laughs> In the shootout with the police, he did have a gun, he was armed, and he did shoot a policeman in the stomach. Oh. Wow. Three times oh. the policeman. The other, I think the policeman survived, but he Still was um, was attempted died. murder there. So, so yeah. things had the ante had been up escalated. Somewhat. Things yeah. have definitely escalated. What happens now? Now he's in prison. I think for I think they put him in for 
Again, I can't remember, don't know, 20 years. As long as they could keep him. Yeah. It's important. I think this is quite funny too, and I, I haven't been able to see these movies and I don't know that I will. I might have a look. But that, that escape has inspired a movie that Beatrice Dalle is in and it's called La Fille de l'Air, I think, which is The Girl in the Air. When he comes out of the coma and he, before he's sent off to prison, he actually he had lost his movement down one side. Mm. So mm. he he's not well. Well, and he, shot the head. He has. Mm. Oh, there's a word here. I've never heard it, but I think it's to do with having one side. You'll probably know what it is, and if I read it, it makes sense. Hemiplegic, which just means hemisphere, I guess. Hemi oh, side, hemiplegic. So on, one side, on his side. limbs don't work. Where, where does he go from here? Well, he goes back to prison, but obviously there's a lot of rehab involved, and he starts to get heavily into yoga and meditation, and he credits that with helping to heal himself. And he ends up becoming, I don't know that he's got full range of movement in both sides, but he's certainly able to walk and he's not, you know, he, he can use his limbs. So he starts down a slightly different path. But what now? Where is he? So now we're... No, wait, there's more. <laughs> there's more. It's more. Yeah. There is more. Now I've got to find other people's names, other things that happen with this. There is a, there is a little bit of another part of the room. And now... Now Wikipedia offers me nothing. This is other stuff that I've found. <laughs> Nadine and the two kids, what's happening there? Well, Nadine goes to visit him in jail and he says, I've got a fabulous idea, Nadine. I've got another escape plan. And she says, no, not interested. I'm not doing that. I've got two kids. We've got two kids. I'm out of here. And she leaves and apparently he's never seen the kids again. I find that hard mm. to believe. But that's the end. That's kind of the end of Nadine. She's like, I don't want it. I don't want this life anymore. I'm going to go and be a mum now. Thank you, but no thank you. And Mm. I believe at that point or sometime thereafter probably, she does go on to write a novel and she's on the TV circuit. You know, she's Nadine Bajou. And actually if you you Google it, quite often her name will come up first because it's the wife that, you know, did the helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of the information kept leading back to her and I wanted more on him. So I imagine within... French society, she must have a, a pretty big profile. They're probably both too, but she certainly does as well as she was the wife that was the greatest wife in the world to go and learn how to fly a helicopter. I think it's pretty impressive. Get, I don't get, think get, I would have Get your it. hubby. Yeah. Commitment. That would have been a wedding house, though, surely, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah. In health, in jail, and in helicopters. Can I fail or... to break you out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can rot there. So <laughs> whilst he's now in prison. <laughs> you do the crime, do the time. Yeah. This prison experience is very different to the others. Now he's in a high security prison and they are Well, he's know, they, tried to kill someone. Yes, correct. Yeah. And they can't have any more egg on their face. Like that's just it. So yeah. again, this seems like it's an exaggeration, but I've read it in a number of different sources that he was in solitary confinement. And I've heard him say it, that he was in solitary confinement for seventeen years. Oh, is that Jesus. a thing? That but yeah, look, I that. have heard of certain people who've been in solitary confinement, but it, how you don't go mad like within five He's years? Not on Robin Island. Seventeen years. No. Is that where well, the man from the Iron Mask was? Uh, no, that no, no, that's South Africa. That's um. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nelson Mandela. Oh, the man right, from the right, Iron right. Mask. I was on that island recently. That's uh, Ilse Magari off Can. So I was there okay. about three weeks ago. The man from the Iron Mask was telling. About my children, but the children we were with, <laughs> tell you about that. So where things take a sort of a turn here is I've watched an interview that Michelle has given and he talks about life inside a box. He sort of says you have to kind of give up everything. You have to stop thinking. I, how do you You're do this? Insane. You're going insane. Yes. Yeah. He says you can't very miss cruel. anything. He said don't talk. He, said, he uses an example. He goes coffee. He goes coffee. That's things, you know, that's an irrelevance. That means nothing to you. He does say it's things like someone touching you. And he said, you know, yeah. there were guards. And he said, but I had nothing to do. I didn't even speak to the guards. I don't, I don't even know that he really spoke. But I don't understand if it was 17 years consecutively and nothing that it, no one ever saw in my – that's kind of the way it's presented. But is, is that possible? I don't know. Would you forget okay. to talk okay. after 17 years? I feel like I would. You would think he would. So he just sort of, he says he sort of shut himself in silence. He takes mm. refuge in practising yoga. So, again, I can understand that would become a really important thing. Yeah. And as I said before, meditation. So the, the days are long, but, I mean, God, that many it's years. Horrendous. I, don't, I don't know how that all works horrendous. out. Horrendous. Yeah. yeah. He's lost his wife. He's lost his children. He has no contact with anybody anyway, so he really has nothing. And it's around this time that a woman on the outside, <laughs> 
It's always a woman. Mm. <laughs> a I young law student by the name of Jamila actually mm-hmm. sees his wife or oh, Nadine, on an interview, and she starts to find out that's quite interesting and she wants to meet him. So she undertakes to work inside the prison that he's at, this high-security prison, and she wants she goes in there under the guise of teaching Spanish. So I think this is in 1991. She manages to get inside the prison. This is a story. I can't believe it's not a movie. <laughs> she manages to get inside the it prison. Are you sure it's not a movie? But anyway. Well, again, I could be making it up. I could be, yeah. just, I could be dreaming. This is so ridiculous. You could be writing and the story. And this is a problem when this was all coming together. I was like, I, I can't verify this. this. This can't be true. This it sounds like I'm just bullshitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she gets into the prison, obviously, to teach Spanish. She's not going to teach the guy in solitary confinement. Solitary confinement Spanish. Yeah. Yet somehow Jamila makes her way to meet Michel Verjour and they strike up a conversation and a friendship and then Ooh, as a result yeah. of that they become pen pals. Ooh. I think then what happens is he then starts, she's a young lawyer and I sus- suspect with her involvement yeah. and lead, he starts to become aware of laws changing in France. And this might be something to your point, Schmidt, which was how a judge investigates a crime. And yeah. it, 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 I get the understanding that historically they could just say, yes, you're guilty or no, you're not. And now something was required where they had to give a re- like a reason, which sounds far-fetched to me, but that was the simple way that it was presented. So he figured based on that there might be grounds for him to contest his sentence. And, again, because the laws had changed or were changing and yeah. Yeah, they do change. So I think with Jamila's influence and they're, they're obviously Berger, they start to have a relationship. Um, well, you know, of course they he's, do. He, while he's in solitary confinement. <laughs> not, a, not a sexual relationship. I was going to say, as good as it could be while uh, you're in, col- in solitary confinement. Yeah, jeez. Yeah. So when it comes time for him to be assessed, it would appear that he has a new wife. He's been <laughs> able to marry Jamila with the permission of her parents, although at the time when they were married he still potentially had 20 years served because he converted to Islam for her. Oh. So he has a new wife, a new religion. He does have the yoga. He does have the... Did he get a divorce? I guess she must have divorced him. That would yeah, have yeah, must have done. She I dumped him. Must have done. Yeah. The other wife yeah, said, piss so. off, I don't want anything to do with you. You're, you're bad news. She, uh, they allowed her to marry him after they had had one unsuccessful attempt at getting him out. So she actually served time what? herself. She tries oh, to run. Right. No. I can't, I, can't no. That. I can't believe I forgot that bit. Oh, my God. It's just too many prison escapes or tents. Right. So with Jamila, who, Jamila, who was the law student, who goes in, meets him, She's, you know, she approaches him, she wants him, she then with him has, they hatch a plan, it's unsuccessful, but in being caught, she serves time. He's no. continued to serve time. She does yeah. her sentence. They still want to be together. He converts to Islam. They are married. And then by the time it comes t- comes time for him to go, she is a lawyer. Well, when you said the parents yeah, are married, I'm thinking, what was she, 12? Like, why, no. why does she need no, parents but, or approval? But she still becomes a lawyer too. No. So she, even after, after her crime, she trial, becomes a lawyer trial, after. Are you allowed yes. to do that? Well, I, I suppose the really. president of the USA ha- could have a Oh, yeah, you can do whatever you like. This is why I feel like you're all going, oh, this is the worst research, most ridiculous story I've ever brought to the table, and I think you're probably not wrong. It just beggars belief. So he is released in 2003. He and Jamila still now live in Paris, and there's footage of them now. You can actually see more stuff now on, like, TV talk shows, and they look like a very (laughs) normal, respectable couple. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And he, in this, like, documentary that I started watching, which was – Oh, God, it was so French. It was insane. It was just all about these beautiful thoughts, all these feelings, and it was incredible. He's just this very calm. He's, he says, you know, he, he found love oh, and love man. is everything and, you know, he's able to reflect on, you know, his youth and how that impacts on his life. And a quote from him, so he's got a book which is called La Mort Ma Sauve du Naufrage, which translates to... In the game, out again. <laughs> Love, love, love saved me, which is uh, whatever, from sinking. Love yeah. saved me from sinking. A book of rare power on the meaning of life, the price of freedom, and the strength of feelings. This is the story of a child abandoned at a very early age, then the story of a teenager marked for life by the feeling of injustice. At the age of 19, 
Michael Vajor borrows a car to go dancing. <laughs> He's arrested and sentenced to two and a half years prison. He will yes. suffer this verdict as a terrible injustice. Mm. From then, Michel Bajor goes to war against society. He escapes the first time <laughs> and shifts to crime. Is that what you call he it? He commits robberies on the run multiple times. As soon as he gets caught, he prepares a new escape. In 1986, from the roof of the prison de la Santé in Paris, he clings to a helicopter and disappears in the skies of Paris. Four months later, during a robbery that goes wrong, oh, he takes a bullet in the head. His survival is miraculous. He takes a bullet in the head. <laughs> Having become the terror of prisoners' directors, he returns to prison higher security units, complete isolation in a concrete cell without any daylight, shutting himself in silence. He takes refuge in practising yoga. But a law student, Jamila, will turn his life upside down. She writes to him every day. They decide to try a new escape, to live together at the end of the world. The operation fails. Jamila is sentenced to seven years in prison. When she comes Ooh. out, she convinces him to draw a line under his Sumerai, Sumerai logic. Sorry, Sumerai logic. For the first time, Michel Vajour agrees to let go and trust. An exemplary detainee, he finally goes out the front door. He is 52 years old. Today, after 27 years in prison, including 17 in high security units, Michel Vajour breathes life with the one who has since become his wife and decided to write his own story. Oh, the story God. of a life, a Very man's dramatic. truth, an incredible story. Sometimes a wound from childhood can change the course of your life. It dragged me into the infernal spiral, robberies and many times on the run, 27 years in prison and five jail breaks. And then when I thought I was dying, love saved me from sinking. <gasps> love Love conquers everything. <laughs> okay. I reckon that's why I didn't get made into a movie, because he wrote that book with such a shit angle on the whole story. If it was told <laughs> more like yours, it would totally be a movie. Oh, my God. So I'm glad that you're using that as an angle because I've got one last little piece of another that I took, which is not the Shoulder Shore story. It is a story of one of other, one of France's other <laughs> What? Uh, Another one? Helicopter escape, because I told you there's so many. There's millions, yeah, and yeah. This yeah one, this one kept coming up when I was searching, because this is a recent story. And I was getting really confused to start with going, who, that's not the name? That's, I don't know who that is. But again, this is just so French. That's why French, I wanted to share yeah. it with you. It's, a, it's the French angle that I'm after here. And there's a word that I've, I've been aware of, but I didn't know that I knew, and now I want to be, I want to be able to use it. And the English title it's actually Financial Times that this article is in. <laughs> uh -huh. and, uh, and, uh, under the same. category of French society. And the headline reads, Notorious French robber blames ennui for helicopter oh, jailbreak. Ennui. Yeah. I was ennui. just bored. I was just bored. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I Googled the meaning of ennui so I would have it. And it's spelled E-N-N-U-I. Mm -hmm. e -N -N and it's the French word to mean Listless, weariness, dissatisfaction, boredom. It's like the blahs, apparently. So when you're feeling a little bit ennui, then you think, mm, I think it's time to, uh, you know, orchestrate Escape. a helicopter <laughs> prison break. It's the only thing to do. Yeah. I just, I love this. Sequestered in a glass box in a heavily guarded Paris courtroom. I don't know how to say this because I think it, you'd pronounce it Redouin Fayed, Fayed talked animatedly with his lawyers to plot strategy during his trial for an infamous prison break in which he escaped in a helicopter. In a sign of notoriety, about 100 journalists were on hand for Fayed's first day of testimony, in which he spoke confidently for more than four hours, displaying regret, defiance and flashes of humour that prompted a rebuke from the judge. <laughs> My addiction to liberty has consumed me, they had said in a clear voice. My as he addiction to liberty. As he apologised for dragging loved ones into criminality. In fairness, most people are addicted to liberty. You know. It has caused major damage in my family and I take responsibility for it all from A to Z. <laughs> Two of his brothers and three nephews stand accused of helping in the escape along with six other defendants. Oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, that's crazy. And there was one last thing that I wanted to end with, which was Fayed stands out for having cultivated his fame by co-writing a memoir in 2010. Here we go. I've written it down. Titled, Bra oh, how would I pronounce it? 
Requier Robber, in which he described his rise from a small-time criminal in a rough neighbourhood to the top ranks of so-called grand banditism in France. I'm a grand bandit. <laughs> yes, the avowed movie buff, to your point, Clarkey, who took inspiration for, for his hold-ups from films such as Heat and Reservoir Dogs, hoped the book would open doors in cinema. Uh, he wanted uh, to be a movie star. A smooth talker with a bold pet and dark eyes, he had vowed that his criminal days were behind him when he went on talk shows to promote the book. My demons are not asleep. They are completely dead. Sure. Well, we know that's not true. And then the last little quote that I want to leave you with was. We know that's not the true. The last thing that he said. He talks, um, in the courtroom, the judges probed for it on what drove him first to steal and then to flee. Was it the money, the adrenaline, the glory? For once, Fayad appeared at a loss for words. It was an infernal spiral, he said slowly. In the concrete sarcophagus of my cell, I felt I could do not any differently. The ennui provoked the escape. And that, my friends, is my very <laughs> French Parisian story of helicopter escapees, particularly Michel Vajon and his wife Nadine. And latter, second wife, or maybe third wife, we don't know. Jamila. Love it. Voila. <laughs> Voila. Excellent work. Excellent work. That was anything but excellent work, but I think it's a, a rollicking tale, right? Goodness me. I'll tell you what, because you, you, you know that now the second one you spoke of, and you said yes. it was more recent. Do you know what year it was? If I Yes, like very recently. I think he's been in court again in the last little while. 23, yeah. October you know, 2023, wow. France's jailbreak, King gets more jail time. Notorious French gangster stands for helicopter jailbreak. French jail robber who said there's loads of stuff on him, but again, wrong person for me. And then there's a couple of others, one of them called Pascal Payette, and he's quite handsome. Have a look at him. He's from 1962. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, who knew? Because when you were talking about the first one, I was, I was thinking, thinking, God, it's so of its time, that big, bold 80s kind of, you yes. know. Would fly in in a helicopter, and I thought, oh, surely nowadays that stuff doesn't happen. But wow, maybe it does. I don't know. And he actually did it when he went to court for it. I don't know if that was in 2018. He had been in a prison visiting room when three men burst in and got him. Yes, onto the aircraft which had landed one of the prison courtyards. So that was in 2018. So that is recent. In a prison his... visiting room. Wow. Five years earlier, in 2013, he escaped from another prison in the north of the capital using explosive to blast through five prison doors, taking what? four prison wardens hostage and escaping in two getaway cars. Were they explosives or were they nectarines? Nectarines, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the French prison guards are a bit shit, aren't they? Nectarines. God. I don't really understand the nectarines as grenades because they're small. A self-confessed freedom addict. <laughs> They must have been painted to look like grenades. They're green, had little but they're quite small. Baby bell prosthetics on them. <laughs> oh God, the baby bell prosthetics! Just the baby bell. The the use of that the wax is just crazy. <gasps> That's genius. What have you found now? His, his, his brothers more. took a helicopter pilot hostage. That's how they did. They, didn't, they didn't waste their time learning how to that's, fly. That's wow. what um, what's her name did for Vasily. That's right. Yes. yes. She hired someone and said, yeah. you're going to fly this fly. way. Yeah. Well, it seems the most sensible way to do it rather oh, than oh, learn oh, how oh. to fly yourself. Mm. Oh, well, there's so many people involved in here. So it's like three armed accomplices let off smoke bombs to confuse guys in the prison. <laughs> One of them, identified as her elder brother, Rashid, used a disc grinder to cut through doors leading to the visitor room. Do they not check what you've got on you? No, they just, yeah. just walked in with a cordless grinder, no problem. I'm surprised it is. Yeah. Just oh, rolled sorry. in the old wood chipper. <laughs> sorry, mate, the scanner's not working today. We're not going to be able to do any metal detecting, but just bring those seven backpacks in. You'll be fine. We yeah, trust yeah, yeah. you. You're like this. all my been... uh, Ryobi tools and charged yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> had been receiving a visit from another brother, Brahim. Inmates of the cell cheered as the helicopter took off with its new passenger with the operation <laughs> taking just 10 minutes. Just 10 minutes. Wow. It'll take long to break out. All the planning that goes right, into it. Right, he told the court he had no idea about the plan. He was acquitted. Wow. Crazy. I, I was going to make I some. I was just visiting. Next thing yeah. I know, someone's breaking in and they've got an angry brother. My other brother's a bad guy. I'm your good brother. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not I'm a, ask my mother. She'll tell you I've always been the good boy. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Don't know why I'm in jail. Wow. What do you reckon? 
I don't even know what to... What silliness was that? <laughs> what silliness <laughs> was that? I feel like there's a lot of no harm, no foul. Oh, I don't know. They've I all mean, done their time. Well, eventually they did their time, but they got a good crack at not doing their time. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I feel for the policeman. Yeah, it was all funny till someone got shot, you know, and yeah, I don't crap. mean shell. I mean a relatively innocent person doing that. I'd job. like to find information on oh, Janila Vajol to see how she was able to practice. Oh, you know, we'll get a law degree or get in criminal. Um, I don't know. I'm I mean, following French, I think. Yeah, you're going a bit too deep for us, Swanny. You're going to have to get your uh, yes. Google Translate out. Yeah. Uh, je suis désolé, je ne parle français. She specialised in the publication of legal books. Oh, there you go. She gives us an original poignant testimony to the life of women in prison. I bet she does. She would know. <laughs> I don't know because it, to me it's not like the Greek one where the Greek guy was like a Robin Hood. Yeah. I just think this is, I mean, it's a ridiculousness, but these people were self-serving as well. He must have MP of another nature, though, because every woman he comes across, you know, is quite happy to help try and break him out of prison. He must be a very charming man. It's so common, though. I feel like for some, <laughs> I guess for some type it's of a... women, like they've got like a, a sitting target, here, like a man who can't go and sleep with other women true, or two of them. That, and so they feel comfortable or safe or I guess they feel love. But I don't think so. I think it's more the security thing. I, I, you know, if someone's locked up, they can't go and do the wrong thing by me. Maybe. Yeah, sure Maybe a project rolled. too. <laughs> yeah. I'll get him I'll get him back on track. By breaking Absolutely. him out of prison and getting myself locked up in the process, that works. Right, my God. I must say, uh, the, the 24, sorry, the 30-month, two-and-a-half year sentence seems bad. He seems to have had his whole angle around that for yeah. his story. You know, if it wasn't for that, uh, none of this would have happened. I'm not sure that's entirely correct it is true because he could concentrate on other highlights of his career like his baby bill work and yet right. in his novel that's exactly right clarky he's he's very focused on that where this started where it bloomed from and yes i it does see he seems a bit hung up on that where he could clearly work with baby bills yeah he's telling a tale sorry. in his book of woe is me rather than the grand adventures that i've had and all of the you know the excitement in my life and my ingenuity like he's a a French MacGyver. <laughs> I love that MacGyver. I haven't heard of that for a long time. Yeah, I know what I'll do. I'll get the baby <laughs> smells. No, MacGyver. Le, 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 <laughs> oh, Jeepers. I love the first wife, though. No, no, I'm done now, actually. No. <laughs> yeah, I think that's but, no, but I think, think, she may have been the second wife because he did have an original partner but only had a yeah. child with, but he was 18. And I, I don't know if they were married. I can't find any details about that person. Right, okay. So, so the, the, the one assume, that we know Nadine. of who flew the, Nadine, who flew the um, yeah. helicopter, I just love her. Like oh, she goes through all of that, all that effort. I love the fact that they went and picked up the kids. That was funny. I yeah, love that yeah, bit, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, a nanopop. That is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> nanopop. I'll just drop up. We're we'll just going to break him out. Then I'll be back to pick up the kids. Can you just look out for a couple of hours? Thanks. <laughs> yeah. The police are out the front, so they drove around the, yeah, yeah. the back lane. They they took the kids out the back and off they went. Oh, Baby girl yeah. prosthetics again. They'll never recognise us. <laughs> Have you seen, you know, those makeup shows? I was looking at them the other not shows on YouTube where you've got people who do a – they're relatively plain to start with, and then they do this incredible makeup job and they transform their face. Oh, yeah, but yeah, then yeah. they take it off, and it's, sometimes they peel down the nose. It's like baby <laughs> bill coming off the nose. Like it's oh. wax. Oh. And that's, that's why when you said, oh, I heard that, you know, I read that they've had plastic surgery, I, all I could imagine was just this peeling off of baby bill wax that's then been covered in makeup to make them look like makeup. they've got a different shaped nose. Nicole yeah. Pinn in the hours. That is my standard go-to uh, prosthetic, prosthetics. Yeah, she had a prosthetic, yeah. a prosthetic nose for that. Yeah, look, I'm happy to leave it as a, I don't know, it's not even a cautionary tale. It's just a crazy tale. That's just me trying to find something that was, well, no I murder. saw this picture and then I figured, you know, there was the Paris and the Olympics and whatever else. So I was like, yeah, true. you know, I just, Good I job. kind of wanted to know more about it really. That's quite often what happens with me. And uh, I'm just looking at this prison that, they uh, oh he he escaped from uh someday does it have a net now though because some now that some it, of them it's, it's been nets. around for a long time and it says 
There have only been three escapes, one in 1927 with a false release order, 1978, and they were killed during the escape, wasn't there? And then my, Michelle Bajour escaped in a helicopter. So there you go. Because it's got a, a VIP section. <laughs> right. The, VI, cool. the VIP <laughs> section. The imprisonment of convicted personalities is one of the features of La Sunday Prison. Mm. The area where these little known people are imprisoned is termed a special area by the administration. But basically, rooms for these prisoners are one as for other prisoners, they're nearby. And then it goes on to like list all these. Famous people, I guess we'd know more of them if we were French, but one of them is <laughs> the Jackal. I've heard of him. I've heard of yeah. him. Yeah. Carlos Fernandez. He's a movie, yeah. Yes. Carlos the Jackal is a Ramirez Sanchez. And then someone it's down here, down the bottom, the last one says Jean Luc Brunel, the former head of French model agency, who was accused of supplying young girls the, due to the disgrace of financier Jeffrey Epstein, was found hung in, hang, sorry, in his cell in 2022. Ooh. So it's all going on there. Mm. Mm. James Hadley wasn't in the VIP section. Could you imagine being VIP section? There's been a couple I of. Know, I uh, feel like it's A list. I don't think it's that. They're that impressive. A list. No, no, no. It's a bit like the um, color. What was it? The the, the VIP section at um, Virgin Festival where we had A list. Loud lounge. Loud lounge. That's it. Loud yeah. lounge. Yeah. Who's the loud lounge, the loud lounge of prison? Yeah. Mm. They got a couple of blow up things they can sit on. I'll tell like you what, that. you'd be very happy if you were in the louder lounge if you were in prison, I think, to be able to sit back on a squeaky plastic blow up thing with a durry and a darts, cool yeah. drink. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. All right. Well, that was very entertaining. Thanks, Swanee. And I'll never look at a nectarine the same. <laughs> no, you'll probably no. you'll probably hesitate, won't you? You don't go near it. Don't, don't go near don't, it. Don't pull its pin. Don't pull a pin. I, I'm do going that. out to buy some baby bells. You never know what you can do with that thing. Let me get there. All right, good job, Swanee. And uh, as we say every week, miss you already. Ciao. 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 Au revoir. Au revoir. Thanks for listening to Trial by Wine. You can contact us at trialbywine at gmail.com. Please rate, review and subscribe to Trial by Wine on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support us, you can become a patron at www.patreon.com, Trial by Wine. Or visit our website, www.trialbywine.com to donate to us. Your support will help us cover many more cases and apply wacky sentences. We really appreciate you listening and hope you tell everyone about us. Our cover art is by John Christo and music is by Beauchamp from pixabay.com.